beautiful, beautiful spirit of Jesus. Bless our encounter with heaven tonight. Amen. Now let's go to verse number. What verse are we? Number five. Verse five. Joshua chapter one. We are in verse number five. Welcome to session number eight of our seven days of prayer. Thank you. Thank you for coming to join us. Go ahead. Forsake you. There is no other option here. God didn't say that sometimes I will not be there. Or sometimes I will throw you to the world for allow his enemies to deal with you. I will never leave you. God is available 24-7 from January to December. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm not going to stand and watch you being defeated. It means that you will never be defeated. Your protection is assured. Your food and storehouses is assured. Your children assured. Your marriage covered with happiness. Instead of your marriage covered with problems and trauma and drama is covered with happiness, with good things. As I was with Moses, how was God with Moses? He protected him from outsiders and he protected him from insiders. From even the Israelites who wanted to kill Moses, God protected Moses. Those who challenged him, God killed them. True. Those who spoke ill of him and of choices he made in marriage, God gave them leprosy. And one of them, God, God appointed that a day will come when he will no longer be the high priest. Even how was God with Moses? Say, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Moses was a killer, remember that? And you are not yet a killer. You are allowing Satan to keep disgracing you and speaking lies to you. How much you fell, God, how far you did this. Have you killed somebody yet? Not yet. You have a little drama in your family and you, the devil will use that to bully you all throughout your life and you allow that instead of telling him, shut up and get out. And at the age of 80, God came for Moses. So why do you think God will not come for you? At the age of 80, God started a real life with Moses in power, in miracle, in the show of the mightiness of heaven. Why do you think he will not be with you? You are not yet 80 years. 
And now you are doubting where is God. Aaron was 83 years old when he joined Moses in leadership. And God was with him. How was God with Moses so that he will be with us? Those who praised Moses' people, which means those who oppress Moses and his people, God decided to oppress them and eventually kill many of them. Wasted their land, excuse me, destroyed. In fact, God turned Egypt into a rumble in the jungle. Like it was like hell. He made Egypt to be hell. Except for the land of Goshen, where the Hebrews were. It's very hard to lead people who have gone through pain and difficulties. And that's one thing that I've learned. It's very hard to lead people who have who are poor and broke, who have never really had money. If they see a little bit of it, they are gone. Don't think that because they come in looking, looking quiet like lambs, nice, that that is who really they are. Just expose them to power and money and you will see who they really are. And many are times why God will not trust them with power and money anyway. God, they will destroy themselves and destroy others. How was God with Moses? He was able to lead slaves. Who every move of yours is interpreted differently. And God was with him. God performed miracles, signs, and wonders, so he must do it for you. I told God today, you stop performing miracles, signs, and wonders in my life and ministry and business, I'll leave you. I'm serious. Because there's no way I'm going to tell the world that you are real and true those things. Those are the agents of your existence. The tools, the agents... The agency of God's existence is miracles, signs, and wonders, period. Every other thing, count me out. You cease to perform miracles, signs, and wonders, I will tell the whole world that you are fake. But how can Satan do that for his own people? You must do it for me and my people. Hallelujah. And whatever is the price, I'll pay for it. Because Jesus paid a price for it. So miracles, signs, and wonders, they are gifts. They are spirits. Therefore, you cannot buy them with money. As long as we will keep your instruction and follow your direction, then miracles, signs, and wonders will be something that will always happen. And I want it all the time. Because people who are coming to me are running away from witchcraft, running away from bad marriages. They don't have jobs. They are broke. Or they are people who already, they had money. They've squandered their millions. By the time they come to me, they only have five cents in their pockets. And they don't have money to give to me to consult. In those days, you are coming to a prophet, you bring him money. Because that's how prophets were kept. You can read the Old Testament and the New Testament, you'll see it. People bring him gold, they bring him silver, they bring him good things. I do not just want people to, to, to give me gifts because of the miracles. I want them to give me gifts because they have honor for who I am. They like me as a person. 
because people can do things for you because of your office. But when it comes to liking you as a person, they don't care. And they will treat you so wrong, so wrongly. It's very hard to lead people who have never seen money, people who are sick. For a long time, it's very hard to lead them. It's not a joke. And God gave Moses this special ability. That's what we call power anointing. So anointing is not just something that you enjoy. It's something that sometimes you endure. Please write that down, honey. Anointing is not just something that you enjoy. Gee, write that down. It's something that many a time you must endure. It's what gives you the ability, the power to endure horrible people, horrible situations. Not to give up, but to move up. Please write it down for me. That's my new slogan. Don't give up. Move up. Victoria, write that down. Don't give up. Move up. Okay. People have been talking about don't give up, look up. Mine has been given to me tonight. Do not give up, move up. I love it. That's for all of you. How was God with Moses? Even when the Israelites did not believe in him. Because many a time you will tell people, this is what God said, this is the way we should do. They will fight you. Where will the next food come from? Manna. Well, different things happen. That's how God was with Moses. That's how God should be with you. Where you cannot produce those things and there's no way the Red Sea opens. So God told Joshua, the meaning is this, what I did for and what I did through and what I did with Moses, I will do it with through you. I will do it with you. I will do it for you. I'll let the people see that I am with you like I was with Moses. I made your grandfathers rich. I'll make you rich. There's no two ways. There's no option here. No other option. There's no other option except how God led Moses is going to lead you. The miracles he performed for Moses is going to perform for you. The anointing he gave Moses is going to give to you. That's just, there is no other option than that. If God can use a murderer, God can use you. If God can make a servant out of Moses who was a stammerer, and somebody who can get angry easily. Then God can use you. You are meek and mild. Like gentle Jesus. But that does not mean that. People should take you are being gentle and mild for granted. Because when they need to see the other side of you. Show. Let them see it. Show them. Ha! <laughs> That's what protects you. No man, no human being will be able to contest with you in your location, in your place of authority, in your place of power, 
there will be no human being that will come to fight you and compete with you. That's why there are many of you that I'm praying right now for God to move you away from where you are having your job to where you should be having your job. Because where you are in God's favor is a place where nobody can challenge you. Nobody can compete or contest with you. You cannot be replaced. They cannot replace you with somebody else. They cannot fire you. In fact, while somebody is thinking of firing you, the person either drop dead or the person himself or herself get fired. And then you take over their position. See, I'm, I'm very brutal in telling the truth the way it is in the Bible. Others don't. Others want to be really nice and smooth. No. Because the generations to come will blame me that I did not tell them what they needed to know. How these things work. I want you to be aware. He said, no man, no human being will stand to fight you. In fact, if they decide to go on a warfare with them, see what I'm going to do against them. You will take them captive. No power of the enemy or power of humans can be invoked against you that will succeed. My name is tattooed on your forehead. Yep. The meaning of it is also when he says, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. It means this. You've never heard this, but you're going to hear it tonight. This is revelation upon revelation upon revelation. I love it. And that's where the power lies. It's in revelation. You got it. You got power. It means that I have moved you up so that you are now existing in two planets. You've never heard that. People just tell you the story. I mean, God will be with him. God will protect. God will provide for him. God will give him power for him to do leadership. That's all they tell you. But they never tell you this. It means that I'm going to move you, little man, into a superhuman being. That's why when God began to say this to, to, to Joshua, sooner or later, Joshua began to run into big angels from heaven. He began to see angels that come to, that was guarding and watching over, over him and over the people. He can now talk to the sun and the sun will stand still with different stuff. It's crazy. There's a side of you that I'm going to move up so that the God in you will come up. I'll move you up so that the God in you will come out, will move up. Yeah. That's what he said. Me, living inside your spirit, I'm going to kick it up. If anybody decides to challenge you, divine electricity will shock them. You are going to command respect from now on from humans and from the heavenlies. Because you are living in two planets. You are living in me and you are living on this earth and you are living in that body. This is interesting. Anybody who see you have seen me in you. So that's why I say nobody will be able to stand. There's no human being that will be able to stand against you or to stand before you to challenge you. It cannot happen. All the days of your life. Read verse 5 again. Let's hear you. I love it. Verse 5. No man shall be able to before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. 
Yeah, that. I will. I will. Yeah, I will not leave you nor forsake. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a vow. That's an oath. He swore to him. He made an oath. He swore to him. He said, "You don't need to worry about anything." 24 7 the cloud follows you the fire follows you now let me tell you the meaning of that verse 5 it also means i have released angelic hosts to surround you and to go with you next it also means i have sent my ministering agents to follow you follow them have turned you from being only human. Now you begin to mingle with angels. And that is when the fear of you will fall on the nations. Why? Because you carry superhuman power and ability for warfare, physical warfare, and for spiritual warfare. For leadership, for rulership, is on. I'm giving you the abilities that are given to the sons of God. To the spirit world. That's the meaning. I'm giving you forces that can only come from the world of spirits. You never really hear of Moses getting into warfare. Not really, just in a few places where they held his hand. Or where he asked them to go. But now you have a warrior, a warrior leader. So there is more here. You have to ask the Holy Ghost to explain these things to you so that you know what the word, the Holy Ghost is saying. See, it's a new turn of event. The Israelites are going to move into actual warfare and they are going to need somebody, what we call the man of the sword. That's who Joshua, you've never heard this word before. Please write these things down for me. The man of the sword, Joshua. So for the first time, a man with a sword, a superhuman sword, is going to enter battle. And the Israelites are going to go with him. You see, uh, 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 um, Victoria, Arnie, uh, Ladri, and the rest of you at the Kindle G, please do, 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 do make sure you remind me of this. There are different epochs. Epochs is E P O C H. Epochs. There are different times, season, different generations who need different kinds of leadership. Cannot be just one type of leadership skill. You needed Moses, a man of more, more of the heaven helping him to prove. His right to leadership was miracles. Here you are going to have a man who has both the miraculous and also the superhuman physical warfare. A man, that's why we call him the man of the sword. He's going to lead them into battles to conquer. Blood gonna flow. You're going to fight for what God is going to give you. So God is not going to give you a leader who cannot fight. See, the dynamics has changed. It's no longer the Moses generation. This is the Joshua's generation. And that calls for a different kind of skill, a different kind of attitude. 
That's what I mean when I talk about the new movement. The new movement started in the year 2000 and has been coming in slowly. We need new kinds of leaders on the earth today. God is going to face out gangster leaders, racist leaders, people who don't like immigrants, thieves, manipulators. He's going to face them out. There's going to be a death of political parties around the world. Because in the new movements, the new generation will come together to work together to save their nations and to save their families and not be firing. Because I have seen the fire, I've seen the street fights, I've seen the police clashing and police fighting against police and soldiers against soldiers. I've seen a fight in the in the White House, I've seen a fight. In the Congress, I've seen a fight in the Supreme Court. I've seen a fight outside those places. I've seen a fight in the House of Senate of Nations because of the new movement. The wind, it is a wind that is spearheading the new movement. A wind is, is coming to your country, is coming to your territory. The wind is coming and is going to reveal what has been hiding underneath the nations. What they didn't want us to see, we are going to begin to see it. And I started saying this two years ago, how God is going to allow nations to be exposed. What we didn't want the rest of the world to see about us, they will see who we really are, beyond what we were hiding. It will reach a place where people are going to say, let Democrats go and live in Democrats' territory and Republicans go and live in Republicans' territory since they can never work together or let America split into different nations. They are reaching there. Because the fear of a man has taken over the nations because they've been bought and sold. So we're going to reach a place where all will crash to dust and ashes. And the new movement will have to build it all up again. When a nation is under judgment, you will never be given a good leader. When a nation is under judgment. I won't tell you how those kinds of leaders, how they come and go. Go and read history books. Everyone come with different styles. The Bushes, the Obamas, the Clintons, the Reagans, they all come with different styles. To save their generations, they are needed to play a little role. But us, we are rulers. We are not leaders. We are rulers. We ask to play a longer role, a major role on the world stage. That's why I need people who can protect me. I need people who can who can minister to a lot of my needs so that I can last long and be able to be of help to you. Mm -hmm. Stop being afraid, become bold, because you've been commissioned. The word that was spoken to Joshua is being spoken over you tonight. It's your word, seize it, run with it. Anybody who wanna bring it, tell them to bring it on. Bring it on, sonny, I'm ready. Sonny, in uh, some of the street language, mean man, 
I don't know what it means in your territory. Bring it on, man. You have been given a strong power, strong force tonight. Go and do great things with it. Eternal Father, your visitation is far more important to me than anything. Jesus, you have been there for us is far more important than anything, anybody. Thank you for giving us this gift. Thank you for coming for us tonight. Amen. This is where we, yeah, this is where we end it today. This is where we end it for tonight. Um we will we will continue. For those of you who wanna go home, please go home. You can leave the conference line, you can leave your stream. Go home. Those of you who need to go to your job early tomorrow morning, go and sleep. We'll have something happening in the next session. I will give about five minutes. Grab something to eat, grab something to drink. And then take a little uh, stretch yourself and come back, Victoria. Take over the session while we while we um, we turn this broadcast. Uh, we get it ready for the next session. Thank you. Hallelujah, no more options. Yes, because if God did it for Moses, then God will do it for you and will do it for me.